Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are joining us from in the world. And welcome to this seventh uh, IPERG webinar, which was rearranged from two weeks ago. Thank you for your patience. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Melanie Tuffen, and I am the Secretary and Treasurer of IPERG, and I will be your host today. I'm just going to start off by giving you a little bit of background about the webinar series. So obviously, our annual meetings were suspended due to COVID-19. So we decided to instigate this monthly seminar series. You can find information on upcoming webinars on our website. And we're trying to cover various topics of interest to IPERG members. If you would like to give a webinar or you have a good idea or know somebody who you think would be really good to give one of our webinars, then please do contact me on melanie at mgtuffen.com. Our webinars are all free and public access, but because the presenters come from across the globe, you may find the timing of individual presentations may vary. So please do check what time the webinar will be in your time zone. The duration of the presentations will vary, but mostly we'll be aiming to keep them around 20 to 40 minutes. And we have a YouTube channel, so you will be able to catch up and rewatch on YouTube afterwards. So you'll find there's both a chat and Q&A function. So please feel free to say, tell us where you're watching from today in the chat. But if you do have any questions for our speaker, excuse me, please use the Q&A function. So as I was saying, we do have a YouTube channel and we would love it if you could find us and if you could subscribe to us if you wanted to. So just some upcoming news on our August webinar. This will be by Ran Carlos Oliveira uh, from Brazil. And he will be talking about the current and future potential distributions of Helicoverpa punctigera. And is this the next fall armyworm? So that's going to be the 25th or 26th of August, depending on where you are. And there's some various time zones for you. So thank you very much. So today we will be having um, Debbie Hemming from the Met Office. Now, Debbie can't join us just yet. So I'm going to be playing a video and then hopefully uh, she will be able to join us at the end to be able to ask, answer any of your questions. However, if Debbie can't make it before the end of the webinar, she has supplied her email address. So you will be able to uh, email any questions that you might have for her. So I'll just give you a bit of an introduction to Debbie. So Debbie Hemming leads on the Vegetation Climate Interaction Groups at the Met Office in the UK and is an Honorary Senior Research Fellow at the Birmingham Institute of Forest Research. She studied in the UK for a Bachelor of Science in Physical Geography, an MS Science in Applied Meteorology and Climatology, and a PhD in Plant Science. She then spent seven years as a postdoc in Arizona, in the USA, and then Israel, observing and modeling vegetation climate interactions in arid environments. Her personal research is focused on understanding and modeling plant phenological changes and applying the latest climate data and models to improve understanding of climate pest interactions. Since 2015, she has led the Met Office's collaboration with DEFRA, so that's the Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs in the UK, uh, Plant Health and Risk and Horizon Scanning Team. Today, she's going to present a brief overview of this work and highlight recent developments in microclimate modelling for informing plant pest risk management in the UK. So just give me a moment and I will start sharing that video. Sorry, one second. Hello, 
And thanks very much for the opportunity to present our work to the IPRG, and particularly Melanie Tufan for facilitating this. I'm Debbie Hemming. I'm the Scientific Manager of the Vegetation Climate Interactions Group in the Met Office Hadley Centre. I'm also a Senior Research Fellow at the Birmingham Institute of Forest Research at Birmingham University. In this presentation, I'll give a really brief overview of the work we've been doing to provide better and more integrated climate data and models for assessing UK pest risk. In particular, I'll highlight our recent work on microclimate. This has involved close collaboration with pest risk experts in the risk and horizon scanning team of DEFRA, the UK Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs and microclimate modelers at the University of Exeter. I've also included here the logos of the other organisations that we've collaborated with on this work over the years. Before describing the microclimate work, I'm just going to mention the wider programme of work that we've been doing. You'll see at the bottom of this slide the list of people and organisations we've worked with on this although our main collaboration has been with DEFRA's Risk and Horizon Scanning team, who we've been working with since 2015. The overarching aim of our work is to use the latest climate science and data to provide useful services for informing plant pest risk in the UK. We've worked on at least 14 priority UK plant pests, including the ones shown here. Outputs from this work have included many technical and summary reports, policy summaries such as this glossy brochure shown here. We've also provided data and summaries for incident management training exercises, including exercise Rubicon, which is shown at the bottom here, and rapid analysis for outbreak management, including the map shown here, which estimated the first flight dates of oak processionary moth across the UK in 2020, when there was a major outbreak here. We've also developed a climate pest risk web tool, which has been the centre for a lot of our work, and it enables us to communicate new analyses really rapidly. Results and reviews have also been published in various journals, including this recent review article, on the use of meteorological data for biosecurity that Katrina McNeil and I contributed to a special issue on biosecurity in emerging topics in life sciences. The overarching aim of our work has been to develop an integrated climate pest risk system, which brings together the latest climate data and models with pest models and other data relevant to pest risk, such as land cover. The hub of this is the Climate Pest Risk web tool, where risk maps can be visualised and new data added rapidly. Here you can see different components of this system. The ones highlighted with green background have been done already to some extent, and the others are planned or in progress. For the rest of this presentation, I'll talk about the work we've been doing to include microclimate estimates. The microclimate that's experienced by small organisms such as plant pests can vary significantly from the large scale climate that's typically considered by meteorologists using observations from met stations or satellites. For example, the map on the left here shows a one kilometre mean land surface temperature range of about 18 and a half degrees C across the UK at 2 p.m. on the 22nd of May 2013. Whereas at about the same time across a 20 to 30 centimetre area of southwest facing slope in Cornwall, in the UK, the temperature range captured by an infrared camera is about 22 degrees C. This figure from the De Freni et al 2021 paper is really helpful for explaining how microclimate may vary from the background macroclimate that's typically captured by MET stations. The left side of the figure shows how micro and macro climates are likely to vary in a forest environment during summertime. And the right side shows the same, but for winter in a snowy location. During summertime, 
temporal variations in the microclimate within the forest canopy are buffered or dampened compared to those outside. So the microclimate would show less extreme variations. This is also shown in the bottom XY graph, which compares the micro and macro climate variations. During winter time, on the right side of the figure, the snow cover results in a decoupling of the climate near the surface within the snow layer with the climate in the atmosphere above the snow. This is shown by the constant temperature within the snow layer in both graphs. In other habitats, similar principles of buffering and decoupling apply at varying degrees, and this influences how different the microclimate is compared to the macroclimate. To integrate microclimate modelling into pest risk analyses, we wanted to consider climate conditions that would be experienced by the organisms, including relevant spatial and temporal scales and the vertical position within the location where pests live across the UK. We collaborate closely with Ilya McLean's group at Exeter University, who are experts in modelling microclimate within ecological systems and have developed a mechanistic model of microclimate above, below and within habitats. The models that we use are described in the papers listed here. The microclimate model we use requires a suite of inputs, including coarse, spatial and temporal resolution climate data, topographic information, vegetation parameters, soil properties and the heights at which the data are needed. Provided these inputs are available, the model can be run at a point location or across an area where the spatial and temporal resolution are defined. For our runs, the microclimate model outputs were hourly temperature estimates at each of the requested heights, both air and leaf temperatures for above canopy locations and soil temperatures at varying depths. And these were output for each of the four habitats studied. For the first set of model runs, we focused on these six priority UK pests. They provide a diverse set of life cycles and habitats to test the model on. For example, oak processionary moth and Asian longhorn beetle are typically in deciduous woodlands, Japanese beetle in pasture and orchards, brown marmorated stink bug in orchards, and the Colorado beetle and potato psyllid within potato crops. The modelled hourly temperatures were for 2017 and 2018 at one kilometre spatial resolution across the UK. These were used with simple temperature-based pest models to derive indicators useful for assessing pest risk. Thermocouples were installed in the four habitats studied throughout 2017 and 2018, and the data from these was used to validate the microclimate model. Also, the pest indicators were derived from both the macro and the microclimate temperature estimates to show that the differences that microclimate model temperatures have on the pest indicators compared to a more traditional estimate made using meteorological station temperatures. Most of the results are still being analysed, so I'll just show some results for the Japanese beetle here. This is a major pest that feeds on over 300 plant species and it's able to strip whole plants, leaving just the skeletons. It's not currently established in the UK, but climate conditions are considered suitable. The life cycle of the Japanese beetle starts with eggs laid within the soil during summer months. Then the larvae develop lower in the soil over the winter before moving to the upper soil layer and emerging the following spring or summer, depending on temperature conditions. The timing of emergence which is assumed to be close to the completion of the life cycle, is a useful indicator for managing the risk. Microclimate temperatures were modelled within a pasture habitat, assuming general changes in soil depth each month. A degree day based pest model with a base temperature of 10 degrees C and an accumulated degree day threshold of 1422 was used to indicate the emergence. 
Here we see the estimate of emergence days on the left map using one kilometre gridded daily mean temperatures derived from the Met Station data. And on the right is the differences between these and the same estimates made using the microclimate model temperatures. These differences are up to about 50 days earlier or later, which may be very important for managing the risk. The differences are not totally intuitive and we're still trying to understand them fully but it looks like locations where the microclimate estimates are later than those using the MET station temperatures, so the red on the map to the right, are where microclimate model temperatures are generally cooler during the larvae development period, possibly due to topography or other local surface condition differences. Whereas blue areas on this map are generally where the microclimate model temperatures are warmer than those of the MET stations, such as due to vegetation or soil buffering in wintertime. Emergence day estimates were also compared using hourly or daily mean microclimate temperatures in the degree day models. Here, the map on the left shows the estimates made with hourly mean temperature and on the right, those with daily mean temperature. You can see that emergence is generally estimated to be earlier with daily mean temperatures, indicating that these temperatures are generally warmer. This is likely to be due to the hourly temperatures capturing more extreme variability, and this is reducing the total accumulated degree days for this series compared to the daily mean series. There's lots of scope for improving the microclimate estimates. I've just highlighted some of these here. While we can model temperatures at all the different heights and habitats, we generally don't have much information on the, where the pests spend their time and for how long. For example, with the Japanese beetle, it would be really good to know more about the soil depths in which the different stages of their life cycle occur and how these relate to microclimate or other conditions within those locations. The microclimate model now also includes estimates of atmospheric humidity. These are really new and need validating, and there are many more climate variables that will be useful to model, such as radiation, wind speed, etc. We can also improve the representation of plant canopies and the pest microhabitats, for example, considering the influence of colonies and tents on microclimate as well as incorporating high resolution remote sensing data to improve the phenological changes. To summarise, we have been developing an integrated climate pest risk system for the UK. This is very much still work in progress. We have a working microclimate model as part of this, and this both the above and the below canopy microclimate models have been published and released as R packages on GitHub at these locations. We've shown that microclimate temperature estimates can make a big difference in some cases to pest indicators compared to those using the more traditional MET station air temperatures. We really need to improve a lot of the information, particularly biological information about the life cycle stages. And we could include more complex climate pest relationships such as temperature, humidity and soil moisture. Thank you very much for listening and I'd be very happy to take questions and if you want to follow up with me, my email is at the top here. OK, so thank you very much. Debbie has now joined us, um, so welcome Debbie. Can you hear me, Debbie? Sorry, Darren, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. And uh, Debbie was okay. on mute. Uh, no, Debbie, mute. Uh, sorry, Debbie seems to be having some problems at the moment where she can't hear me. <laughs> um, um, so um, I'm not, she is still on mute. Do you want to try unmuting yourself, Debbie? Can you hear me now? Uh, 
Okay, no. So unfortunately, as is often the way, we have hit some technical <laughs> difficulties. Um, so I'm afraid that if you do have any questions, I'm sure that Debbie would be delighted um, to answer them if you wanted to follow them up with her uh, by email. Um, and she's also willing to answer some questions in the chat. So uh, I can start off by um, asking if, so I can start off by uh, typing a question to her. Um, so, oh, no, that's not working. Okay, I think what we'll have to do is we'll have to actually end there today. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry about that, but please, if you do have any questions, please do get in touch either with Debbie or you can get in touch uh, with us at IPEG, so uh, melanie at mgtuffin.com, and we will pass on those questions. An apology for the little technical hiccup there. So thank you very much for joining us today. Um, okay, oh, sorry, we've got one question through, um, which is, in the degree day modelling, are you using average daily temps? So we might just have to wait and see if uh, Debbie is able to answer that. No, I think you're no. um no. <laughs> <don't mean> to... <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Debbie, and um, sorry for our viewers today, but thank you very much for joining us and um, hopefully we'll be able to answer some of your questions via correspondence. So please do tune in for next month's uh, webinar and we will see you all again soon. Bye bye for now.